Hey everyone, Mario again, coming at you with another review, and as you can tell from the title up there, I am now reviewing the fourth Superman movie, and the last one to star Christopher Reeve, Superman 4 The Quest for Peace, aka Superman 4 The Quest for Shit, aka Superman 4 The Quest for More Money, aka Superman 4 Why the Heck Did They Even Make This Movie. Now it has a 3.6 on IMDb and a 28% with the audience on Rotten Tomatoes and a 10% with the critics and after watching the film I can understand wholeheartedly why it has it. I understood before when I'd only seen clips but after watching the movie in its entirety I understand even more. Here's the consensus on Rotten Tomatoes. The Superman series bottoms out here. The action is boring, the special effects look cheaper, and none of the actors appear interested in where the plot is going. That is true. The special effects for this film are way worse than they were before. I mean, the first two films are where the special effects were at their best for this series. Three, they're serviceable, but you could tell they're not as good as the first two. I mean, even two's effects do seem a little worse than one, but then again, that's because one, the plot wasn't really as elaborate. It didn't involve fighting. Or at least, you know, super people with superpowers fighting. So for what they, so for what they had to do, it works. Here... It fails with that, and it fails for even stuff that looked amazing in the first three films, like Superman flying. And then, of course, the actors. Only two actors in the whole movie seem like they actually have any heart at all. One, of course, is Christopher Reeves as Superman. Of course, I will say this is his weakest of performance out of the four films, but it's still good to see him as Superman one last time. And the other, of course, being Gene Hackman, as Lex Luthor, but still not as good as the first film, or even his appearance in the second film. It's just he seems to be the best actor out of all of them for this film. Now, their film was directed by Sidney Free. I don't or Ferre, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that last name. Other films this uh, director has done were have he did the taking of Beverly Hills, Iron Eagle One, Two, and Iron Eagle on the Attack, American Soldier, Cold, My Five Wives, During One Night. This is probably going to be his uh, negative magnum opus. Is that this is the film probably most people think of when they think of him? Then again, they might also think of the taking of Beverly Hills, but I haven't seen that film, so I can't comment on it. But this is probably the film that is probably going to have the most infamy when connected to him. Now, after Superman three, Alexander Salkind and his son, having seen that the Superman films probably ran their course by that point, decided to sell the series. This, of course, was after Supergirl as well, and Reeves was supposed to make a cameo in that, but he couldn't, and it was a box office failure, and eventually Salkind and his son sold the rights to Canon Films, which made this film. One thing I will say I'm glad that they did with this film was they actually returned to the classic Superman credits, even though it looks like it was done on a budget of five bucks. Now, the main reason that this film was made is because the Canon wanted to do another Superman film, and they wanted to use Reeves. And as Reeves himself admitted in his autobiography, he wasn't really sure that he wanted to do another Superman movie. Especially if it was going to be treated as a farce, which was probably part of his problem with the third film. Now, uh, the main thing that got him to come back was that if the film was successful and they called for a fifth film, they told Reeves he could also direct, which... That's one thing that I have my, my curiosity is piqued about is how Reeve would have directed a Superman movie, but alas, it's not to be. Well, they should have actually given him the helm of this film, but that's just me. And of course, they decided to produce a product of his choice, and that film turned out to be Street Smart, and I haven't seen that film, so if I turn out to like it, I guess you can balance out it. We got a bad film, but we also got a good film out of it. Now, the score, I think at one point they wanted John Wims to return to do it, but he couldn't, so he recommended Alexander Courage. Of course, they still have his Superman theme, because this series, the Superman theme, is what makes the series. Now, as well as Reeves' you know, performance, but I think you guys get it, because it's an iconic theme. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway. Now, the plot of the movie is that Superman, he saves some cosmonauts in the beginning, which is where you can see the beginning of the downward spiral of this movie. Uh, one of the opening sequences is probably one of the best scenes in the movie, and that's where Clark is at the, uh, at the fa family farm, and he's selling it. He doesn't want to sell it to a big corporation. He actually wants to sell it to someone who actually wants to be a farmer, which is totally in character for Clark. 
and he signed it because his mother died. She passed away in between 2 and 3, and it's mentioned offhand in 3, which I'm surprised this scene didn't happen in 3. But that's just me. Maybe it was left over from 3 to decide to use it. I don't know. But it's a good scene because it's a good sentimental scene. And, of course, it gets a, it's ruined by a plot hole where Clark finds this green Kryptonian crystal. It's like, didn't he find that in the first movie? Now, eventually we find out that the Daily Planet has been bought by... Uh, a man named David Warfield and his daughter Lacey. Now, of course, for some reason, Lacey takes a liking to Clark, which, with how uh, Clark portrays himself at work, it's like, why would she like him? Maybe it's because he actually seems real and honest and all that, and it helps some character development with Lucy, which I guess is one of the story things of the movie, but with how the film is executed, it does fall flat a little bit, and it's like, this could have been done better, but it's one of the little bit, it's a little bit of a glowing light within this piece of crap film. Now we come to the main plot point which is that the United States and the Soviet Union look like they're about to go into nuclear war because summits, a summit failed and Clark is beginning to get concerned but he doesn't do jack squat at first because he goes to the Fortress of Solitude to seek advice from Kryptonian spirits and they tell him not to. That he could find another world that's less uh, violent. Of course you know you must not let the people of Earth believe in one man. You're just setting him up to be betrayed. Which I can understand the rhetoric in that. You know, if you know, if you know human politics, you can understand why. Now, after receiving a letter from an elementary school kid, which I have to say that's a scene I admit I did fast forward through with a kid that were talking in the school. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. He decides to get rid of all nuclear weapons on Earth, which I can understand his sentiment with there because... I personally feel that we as humans should not have nuclear weapons anymore. I mean, because look at all the tension that they could build and think about it. If you're going to have a nuclear weapon, eventually you're going to have to justify having it. Even if you only have, if you have one missile, maybe not so much, but if you have an arsenal like the United States does, partially does due to the Cold War, but if you have an arsenal, eventually you're going to have to justify having it. You know, it's just like having a large standing army, eventually you're going to have to justify having it. So getting rid of the weapons, I think. But the problem is, how do we get rid of them? Superman's solution is to throw them into the sun, which I don't know if that would work in real life, but for the sake of the plot, it works. <laughs> and, of course, at the same time, Lex Luthor is broken out of jail by his uh, teenage nephew, Lenny Luthor. Luthor? Luthor. Yeah, Luthor. Lufa, Luthor. Lenny Luthor, played by John Cryer, who, of course, people who watch 80s films will remember him from Pretty in Pink. I remember him from... Men, 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 manly men, 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 two and a half men, where he plays uh, Charlie Sheen's brother. <clears throat> now here his talent is kind of wasted, because you can tell he probably just did it for a paycheck, which all the actors probably did this far, which is probably why they're phoning in their performances. But Hackman, like I said earlier, he's probably one of the few where he seems totally in character, but... It's kind of ruined by the plot. Luthor's revenge on Superman. I will say it's the weakest out of all of his plots, in even including the next film, but I have to say it is believable because of what Superman has done so far to him. And even though his idea is far-fetched, the way he executes it, it's sort of believable, but it's ruined by the execution when we get Nuclear Man. Now, originally there was supposed to be a proto-Nuclear Man that we saw earlier in the movie, but it was cut out, which... You know, I know it was cut out. It doesn't really ruin the pacing of the movie. It makes the movie a little bit shorter, which, with how the film is, you're like, thank God, it's over. But Nuclear Man, the idea, I think, is sound. And if the movie had a bigger budget, it could have worked. Because this film, I believe, had the smallest budget out of all the Superman movies at $17 million. Now, if that had been the budget of the first film, granted, the film won't look as good as it does, but you would think the budget would go up. Now, I've heard that the budget was originally supposed to be double that, which... Third, about 34 million, which is still smaller than the previous ones, even when, especially when you add in the inflation that had happened. But it would have, the film would have looked better, but they slash it in half because too many projects going on. It's like, okay, if you're going to do that, here's what you do you postpone Superman 4 until you don't have so many projects going on, and then you give the full attention to that. Makes me wonder how the film would have come out, come out if they did that, but alas, they didn't. And so the special effects, she bout on the effects? Cannon did. <laughs> now, eventually we get the birth of Nuclear Man, who's played by Mark Pillow, which that last name is like, is that his real name or is that a stage name? And of course he's voiced by Gene Hackman. Now of course the character is interesting, sort of, but 
you know, how he has nuclear radiation powers and he's solar powered, but how he is executed and all that, it makes it a fail, especially when he does confront Superman. Their fight scene, laughable because of the effects and all that. I mean, it makes you really appreciate the fight sequences in both cuts of Superman 2 because of how bad the, these fight scene was turned off. And then, of course, eventually, you know, Superman's going to save the day. Granted, his, how he does it, it kind of defies the laws of physics, but then again, Superman does that a lot in these movies anyway. First two films, you don't mind it, but this one is like, really? You're going to move the moon? Think of all the innocent people killed when the tides changed. Superman, you're an asshole. And, of course, uh, Superman's powers once again being dictated by plot. Oh, my, he has wall-building vision. dun 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 I think that was done better in the comic adaptation of the movie where he actually rebuilt it by hand, but that's just me. And then, of course, the peop the talking in space bit, which the superheroes doing it, I don't mind, but the humans doing it. Why'd you take him up into space? We can't breathe in space. Do you not know physics? Oh, nuclear man, I'm sure he doesn't know physics because he didn't go to school, but Clark, you should know physics. You should. That's why you should try to save her more. And, of course, the green crystals of deuce ex machina for the film which it's like okay if you're gonna do that try to come up with something better but that's just me now um margaret kidder and lois lane she's in the movie more which it's after what after they gave her the shaft for three it's good to see her back in the movie more but she's kind of useless here too it's just a scene where there's some com comedy with clark having to go between himself and superman and of course uh something that one scene that really does anger me. Okay, you guys all know my thoughts on the ending, on both endings of Superman 2 with Lois losing her memory. Of course, in Lester's cut, we have the kiss, which I think that power is wasted. You guys all know my thoughts on that. And of course, in Donner's cut, the original intended use of turning the Earth backwards to reverse time. Either way, she, for she loses her memory of Clark being Superman. Now, in this film, he undoes that by showing her, once again, he's Superman, but then... I guess to relieve guilt. And then he does the mind erasing kiss again. I'm like, what? S Clark, were you just trolling her? You just did that because you wanted to have a little fun. Dressed like that, I'm sure you'll find it. I'm a <coughs> but it's like, why would you do that? It makes no sense. And of course, I brought it up once, all the deleted footage and all that. It's mostly just minor stuff that I doesn't really hurt the pace of the film, but apparently they wanted to use it for a fifth film, when I'm like, really? You were going to use that in a fifth film? Really? It's just that the movie, I'll say, it's I'd say it's worth one watch, whether you like it or, or hate it, it's up to you, but me, I just feel that it's, it's a sequel that could have been done better, because it had a right idea with Superman having to deal with nuke the Cold War and all that, so it's a film that made it perfect for the 80s with Reeves as Superman and the perfect villain because Nuclear Man being the epitome of the evils of nuclear energy especially when made by Lex Luthor it was an idea that if you had ran with it like rewrite the script a little bit more get a bigger budget and probably a better more experienced director for a film like this it could have been way better than it actually was but with how the film is it's just I guess it's, it's basically a film that you would want mystery science fiction theater or whatever that show is called to poke fun at. It's a film that you know that deserves a fan commentary that makes fun of the stuff. And of course everyone's made fun of it. Lin Carr and the Nostalgia Critic aka Doug Walker reviewed it already. They've trashed the film to death already. And Matt's reviewed it. Mike's going to review it soon or something. Everyone's talked about Superman 4 but I just had to get, get this out of here. Let's just say... I think, like I said at the beginning of the review, kind of sums it up. The quest for more money slash the quest for shit. It's a movie that had its heart in the right place, and it has a little bit of a heart, but buried under all the problems with the film, it's kind of hard to watch. I, uh, this is a bold statement, but I'm going to say this. I feel Batman and Robin is a way better film than this. Now, but before I say that, let me hear this out. One, you guys don't know why I can watch Batman and Robin, the fact that I'm a fan of the 60s show, and even despite the fact it takes... It kind of spits on the continuity and tone of the previous films. It is technically following the tone of something that exists. And two, 
even if the production and sets and stuff or have a more cartoonish feel than the previous three films you could see that the money is there it's just how it was spent you'll disagree with here you can't really see you could see that the money was like five bucks or something and also unlike this film Batman and Robin does have some interesting ideas as well even though they're not fully done as well as they could it at least is entertaining with the fact that I could watch it and get it anytime mostly when I'm in the mood for it and be entertained. This film, I can't really see myself rewatching this film. I couldn't really see myself getting the DVD unless I found it real cheap, and that's mostly just for completion, for completing the set. Like like Superman three, I could see myself getting that DVD easily. Superman Returns, I guess, set in between Superman three and four, and whether I'd buy the DVD myself. But anyway, my rating for Quest for Peace, just on the stuff I liked about it, one out of five stars.